Hi, I'm Eric Ford for Made Here. Directors Malcolm Quinn Silver Van Meter and Yue Yao Wang from Thetford, Vermont, introduce us to Brian Boland in The Balloonist. Utilizing extensive interviews, verite style footage, animation, and archival materials, The Balloonist paints a portrait of a beloved and eccentric hot air balloonist and folk artist who sadly passed away in 2021. The Balloonist is the very first project to be released with support from the Made Here Fund. You can watch The Balloonist and other great Made Here films streaming on vermontpublic.org and through the PBS app. Enjoy the film, and thanks for watching. We used to go to Ireland every year in the fall, myself and a bunch of buddies, and bring a balloon. They had the Irish National Championships. And the events were like, we had to fly like 10 miles and whoever could land closest to a pub. You sort of stopped eating, and we were just drinking this Guinness. And by about day five, you were just going to the crapper all the time, you know? Yeah. And it's like, what the black beer that came in was like what came out. Yeah. And we, we had a landing, and it was at this farm. One of my buddies, he had a crap so bad, and he went over there behind the shed, and like three cows came up and stood next to him. And here's Steve, and here's the three cows, and all at once, the foursome let it go. <laughs> and the cows, when they crap, it's all liquid, you know, it's like, <laughs> and he did that. And then he was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it these last five days. And then he remembered hearing that if you eat bananas, it firms you up again. <laughs> so on the way back, we stopped at like the first equivalent of a general store, wiped out their banana supply, and that became the theme the rest of the trip. And then after that trip, I started putting banana holders in all my baskets. And there's actually one sewn into the side there's a little pocket that's banana shape. And then a balloonist found one of these hard case banana holders and mailed it to me. <laughs> so. Rising quickly, rivers jump to banks, and I am moving slowly toward our home. Road sign on the old post, think of happenstance. You're at Post Mills Airport. My name is Brian Boland. I'm a hot air balloonist, and not only from the capacity of flying them, but I uh, design and build them as well. Um, through the years, I've built 165 of them. And I also, if you so choose, you're going to see a lot of my stuff. I'm a stuff guy. I collect things and I make things. So that's what it's about. I run an airport. That sort of helps pay the taxes. But the ballooning is my, my love and my, my livelihood. My ballooning started in 1970, and uh, I was down at Pratt Institute. There's the very first one that I ever built. That's the first inflation in Brooklyn, New York. I thought I was going to whip it off in like two weeks. I had never sewn anything in my life. It took nine months, really intense months, to build it. I mean, it's a fascinating place to be up there. You don't have to be high in the air for a whole different world to open up. If I go a few days without a flight, 
I, I get it like all tied up in my underwear and it's like ah and uh, even some people that know me they go oh my gosh he must have gone a, almost a week without a flight uh, I get up in a balloon and it's a wonderful place like this winter I've been flying all by myself in a tiny tiny one person balloon and it's like my best place for going and thinking you know, while I'm up there it's my mind wanders and I'm thinking about the next project my flying, I, as I said, an awful lot of the things I find here that are down here are found during the balloon flight. If we were going someplace in a vehicle, the three of us, I would probably tend to have you guys do the driving. And I sit off to the side and I'm looking out the window all the time. And suddenly I'll go, whoop, whoop, back up. You know, I just saw something. And it had a sign on it said, it said free. <laughs> my fan club. When I was a when I was a kid, um, like all the years growing up, every Wednesday we had spam. And there's like over three thousand ways of preparing it. And uh, I could only eat it when it was like mom used to do it. it came out of the can and it was baked and crispy on the outside. So I turned to the back of the can, there was an 800 number. So we call this number and we get this gal on the phone. And I said, you know, we've got the colors of your spam logo in balloon in our inventory. There should be a spam balloon. And she says, oh, geez, I don't know about that. She said, let me turn you on to marketing. So she does, it. one phone call. I'm talking to this guy, he goes, God, that sounds great. And I said, uh, here's the deal. You, you're gonna send me a grant for like $10,000. I'm gonna build this, I'll own it. And each time it flies, spam gets a little publicity. It may be fairly local, but I do go to balloon meets around the country. And uh, there we are. For me, I've been flying so long that I I don't have to over-focus on making the thing work. And I can be this um, incredible spectator up there. I've seen an old fire truck from 1917 sitting in a field. And then I'll go on a day off and I'll go knock on the guy's door and I'll say, you know, I uh, saw that old fire truck way in the back along the tree line. And he goes, that's still there? And I go, yeah, yeah. And he goes, geez, what do you want it? And I go, well, I got this museum. It would look kind of neat in there. He said, go get it, you know. And I don't even get a chance to offer the guy some money for it. He's just, you know, get it out of here, you know. And that's like old stuff that really looks old. You know, I don't go and restore vehicles. I look, I like old things that really look their age. Each one of these vehicles has kind of a funny story like this. This one, I got out of a divorce. Isidore Duncan, who was a famous modern dancer like in 1920s, she, uh, really out there, avant-garde, you know, modern dancer. She got her, she had one of these and got her scarf caught in the rear wheel and it wound her up and strangled her, killed her. <laughs> And there's this red one. Mm -hmm. That's from Second World War, a German BMW. But that would not have been the color that they'd have had back then. It would have been more like this. Would you like a beer? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. It's all been consumed. This vehicle here was a prop that was put together for a silent movie in 1920 called Way Down East with Lillian Gish.
But there it is, the tank. Mm -hmm. And what it shoots is little stuffed animals. The guy up top, he's rotating the, uh, the cannon, and there's a front yard with some little kids in it jumping up and down as the tank's coming by and fire away! So how many of those little houses and huts do you have? Uh, like the tree houses and things? Yeah. I believe there's 51. The first one was the clubhouse way at the end. That could be almost 20 years. Some are tree houses, some are huts, some are uh, little forts, and some are just destinations like like the piano hut over there. And at times, I'll just hear piano music out of nowhere. It's like, where's that coming from? I pretend I'm 10 years old again when I come up with the idea for it. And then the materials that are used sort of have to be free, stuff that you found. So like, I build them with what would be like a 10 year old's budget, which is no money. There, there's one in the woods there called the Lightning House. And it was this huge pine tree that was like 120 feet tall and a lightning bolt hit it. My buddy was gonna start cutting the tree up. I said, don't. I said, I see that as being the basis for a multi-level tree house. And we'll call it the Lightning House. <laughs> Remember the date, it was March 6th, a number of winters ago. I was in New Zealand, and they got like this one final snowstorm up here in Vermont, and the roof caved in. And all the scrap wood got piled up over here in piles. And uh, I remember it sat, the pile sat here for a year, and, and some guy pulls into the parking lot over there, and he says, so when are you gonna light the burn pile? And I looked, and just, it clicked, I said, that's not a burn pile. Those are dinosaur bones. And I said, we're going to build a huge dinosaur out of that. So the rules were, we worked from the scrap material. You couldn't cut any board. And nothing could be absolutely vertical, which is the term plumb. And nothing could be perfectly horizontal. And there's this ice cream company called Ben & Jerry's. Uh -huh. Ben & Jerry's should make an ice cream called of a Montresaurus. Uh, the state sent their structural engineer out and said, you can't ever have people under here unless you can find an engineer, a structural engineer, that'll write up a document and say it's safe. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that ain't, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Some local redneck guy up on the hills, he came by with a whole bunch of bird nests he found in his barn and he placed them in places and he says now the authorities can't make you tear this down because these are rare birds that live here <laughs> but the birds did move in and uh, at times we'll be standing here and you'll see a bird zip in there and just vanish so there are probably all kinds of little birds that have yeah. started their life in here imagine coming out of an egg and saying my gosh where am I <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the belly of a Vermontosaurus Five more have been built. And there's one over there called the Mobile Saurus, as in it's mobile, it can travel. The Lake Fairly Monster. The next one is the, actually got a real dinosaur name, which is a Stegosaurus. This little one, which is now called the Baby Saurus. The one over that way that used to be, in a sense, the baby dinosaur, is now a little bigger than this one. So that one sort of lost its name. So I gotta think of a name for that one. Did Tina also run the airport with you? Um, not really, but she helps when it comes to 
stuff like on the computer. I tell people the first date that we went on, I had an old rickety picnic table that came with the airport. I mean, it was rotten and everything. And I put a propane tank on the top of the table, it looked like a stuffed pig. And I laced the cable in aircraft cable, hooked it to a burner and a balloon, and we went flying off in this rotten picnic table. And I had her sit straddling the cross member, which there was some strength there, and I was at the other end straddling that one. And uh, that picnic table still exists. Oh, it's, it's in the museum over there somewhere. You know, it's like people look at it and they go, what, what is this thing here for? I said, that's the flying picnic table. Last of the snow, my prediction is Wednesday, it'll be gone. So there's those two and there was a little sliver on the far side of the hangar there. You know, just like everything, it will eventually completely disintegrate and crumble. Vermonters and beyond are mourning the loss of a longtime record setting balloonist. Yesterday, 72 year old Brian Boland took four people for a hot air balloon ride when he became entangled in the gear and fell. No passengers were hurt. This one's for you, Mr. Boland. Good morning, uh, Post Mills and uh, EBAA. Well done for the uh, commemoration you're doing. This is a celebration from our part in the UK to you. So really what we're saying is thank you very much, Brian, for the celebration of your life. And what we have all got, as you had a banana in your basket, we've all got bananas and we'd like everybody to raise their bananas and say, Brian, thank you very much for your efforts, your life and uh, long live the banana in the basket. Sunday, my boy, grew to ten miles tall. Feet still on the earth, head above it all. Stride around the world. 
of kings and caves on mountaintops Wet in oceans deep To see what waits when the water stops Someday my boy Wanted so far I've come back again Wishing to be small I'm in my lap Like it did back then Were it not this night I tuck you in with love and joy And sleep overtake your eyes Cause tonight was still my little boy And I'll be there for you Vermont Public, partnering with local filmmakers to bring you stories made here. For more, visit vermontpublic.org.